Good afternoon. Thank you for coming out this afternoon. I'm State Representative Donna Oberlander, the Republican Caucus Secretary and a member of House Leadership. We're joined by so many of our colleagues who understand the importance of being here today and taking a stand against unacceptable behavior, not just under this dome, but across this Commonwealth and this nation. Sexual harassment and workplace misconduct. Sexual and workplace related harassment are serious issues that must be given prompt and direct attention. With what we are announcing today, we are prioritizing potential victims. We are emphasizing that anyone facing harassment and or misconduct must have suitable outlets for them to be heard and for timely action to be taken. We don't want unintended consequences to arise from hastily passing proposals. To achieve this, we are insisting on a thorough review of the laws, protocols, and procedures already in place to help determine any appropriate follow-up action, policy, or changes. We've called this press conference today to talk about efforts we're undertaking to help prevent anyone, woman or man, from being afraid to go to work. As a legislative body, we are working to address this issue broadly, both from an internal perspective with our own policies and as a public policy, policy issue. We want to make sure that we get this right. We don't want to enact any sweeping reforms that put at risk the confidenti confidentiality of a victim or who jeopardizes the safety of any employee. This is a complicated issue that can't be solved by one piece of legislation. And we do not want to put a Band-Aid that may only work for a handful of cases. This is an issue that requires thoughtful and deliberate approach. And that's what we're doing. We'll hear more about those proposals in a couple of minutes. But I want to take the opportunity to talk to you about what we've done in the House Republican Caucus regarding this issue. Not just about the cases you're reading about in the news, but what we've done consistently for over two decades. Harassment, whether sexual or otherwise, should not and cannot be tolerated in the workplace. And we take those complaints very seriously. We have fully and complied with our sexual harassment policy, which has been in place since 1994 and has been updated on various occasions to reflect changes in the law and best practices. We will and have continued to follow our policy, which is the strongest of the four legislative entities. But we are also open to looking at what we've done and perhaps if it needs to be strengthened, we will do so. We always have been willing to make changes where deemed necessary and appropriate. At this time, I will turn it over to my colleague, Representative Cheryl Delosier. Good afternoon. Throughout my career in state government, I have witnessed the benefit of gathering all information and taking a deliberative approach to making legislation. While harassment should not and cannot be tolerated, as we cannot say enough, in this workplace that we all find ourselves, we need to feel that we are safe and that we have avenues if we feel we are not. We need to examine the laws and regulations and we need to see what the policies are that are already in place. And I'm proud to sponsor the resolution to take a look at a task force on harassment and sexual misconduct in the workplace. The task force will operate in the same manner that the highly successful Child Protection Task Force has worked and we have been made put into action legislation in order to deal with this that issue. We want to do the same with this. We have resulted in over two dozen new laws that safeguard our children because of that. The Harassment and Sexual Misconduct in the Workplace Task Force will be responsible for conducting a comprehensive review of federal, state, and local laws, regulations and policies, and to unearth inequities that we want to be able to bring feedback back to the House of Representatives and the Senate and the Governor. Members of the task force will include human resource professionals, employers, employees, 
state agency victim service organizations and attorneys. We will be the best served by gathering this information with all of the stakeholders that are a part of this to, be, to join us. The ability for us to take a look at this is the fact that before we can pass legislation, and the same with the Child Task Force that works so well, before we go out and pass legislation, we need to understand what we have in place, what we have that's working, what we have that's not working, and we need to make sure that we question what it is that we need to do. So by having this with the House and the Senate, Republicans and Democrats, we can question what it is we do on a day-to-day -day basis, what we can do better, and where we need to make change. And this isn't a Republican or Democrat issue, and this isn't a House or a Senate issue. This is an issue that we all need to address and we all need to pay attention to. Because many times throughout my uh, career in working for victims and having their voice, if they don't feel safe in making an assertion, they're not going to see a better workplace and we are not going to have a better workplace. So we need to make sure that we give them the avenue that they have and we need to make sure that they feel comfortable in doing so. And we owe the victims to remove any barriers and make sure that the most appropriate and effective safeguards are in place. I'm confident that the task force will be the best way to fill these holes and the ability to see where our gaps are, understand, have a dialogue, have questions, and have them answered. And I appreciate the support, and I ask my colleagues for that support. We'll be working forward, and I appreciate the opportunity to do this and look forward to having the discussions that we need to have in the state of Pennsylvania. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Representative Marcy Topol from Montgomery County, and I'm pleased to be here today to work on this two-package bill with my colleagues, Representative Oberlander and Representative Delosier. Harassment, as I said, whether sexual or otherwise, would not and cannot be tolerated in the workplace. We take every complaint seriously. And while our own policy has been updated to reflect the law changes in the law and best practices, it's time to review those practices and policies to deal with this issue within state agencies. Within the second bill of this package, the Joint State Government Commission will study the frequency of harassment and sexual misconduct in the workplace within state government. The JSGC will prepare an analysis of the prevalence and results of harassment and sexual misconduct complaints. What they will report to us will include the number of complaints, any disciplinary actions taken as a result of those complaints, and any complaints that ultimately refer, are referred to law enforcement for further action. Also, we want to know what complaints result in monetary awards or settlements. Also, within the scope of their study, there will be a comparison of human resources practices and policies for harassment and sexual, sexual misconduct for each state agency and entity. We hope to have that report back to the uh, General Assemb Assembly within 12 months so that we can review their findings and recommendations. I hope that we can get broad support, bipartisan support for this two-bill package, and I am pleased to work on this issue with my colleagues. At this time, I'd like to introduce my um, colleague, the Chair of the Labor and Industry House Committee, uh, Representative Rob Kaufman. Thank you, Marcy. I appreciate it, and I appreciate the work that's been done on these bills. Uh, these have not been thrown together. They have been worked on very hard behind the scenes, and I believe they've come up with extraordinarily uh, productive uh, work. And as chairman of the House Labor and Industry Committee, I am co-sponsor of these pieces of legislation. And I'm here today to uh, make an announcement that we've been working on the House Labor and Industry Committee that uh, we will be holding public hearing on harassment and sexual misconduct in the workplace. Uh, the, the upcoming hearing will be on April 24th, um, just in a couple of weeks, and it will be a comprehensive hearing. Uh, we will begin at 10 a.m. and we'll be going to 2.30 p.m. with a lunch break. Um, this is not going to be a hearing on any particular piece of legislation. This is going to be a comprehensive hearing. We're going to have three panel discussions with a variety of professionals uh, with insights uh, into various aspects of workplace harassment and sexual misconduct. 
Uh, there will be a panel that will include discussion related to re and uh, responding to encouraging and providing assistance to victims of workplace harassment and sexual misconduct. There will uh, in, in one of the panels include a discussion of the current state, uh, federal laws, legal issues, and employer best practices related to workplace harassment and sexual misconduct. And there will be another panel that will include a discussion of proper investigatory procedures and procedures for monetary claims relating to workplace harassment and sexual misconduct. Uh, so again, this won't be on any particular legislation, um, but at this uh, event here today with the work, the good work that's gone on putting these pieces of legislation together, I thought it an appropriate time to announce this and let everyone know that uh, we have been working on this. We are taking this very seriously and um, we believe it is a topic worthy of discussion here in the House of Representatives and we will be doing that in the House Labor and Industry Committee. Thank you. Are there any questions that we may be able to answer? What we said is that this is not a partisan issue, Republican or Democrat, and we would be hopeful that the Democrats would come on board. And then I guess to follow up on that, um, there were lots of references to um, potential other bills having been thrown together in the past. Are you guys you know, referencing the bills the Democrats have already introduced on this topic? No, it's the same No. No, I, I think uh, there's, there's, we're not trying to decry anyone else's efforts, um, but there has been a lot of discussion on why aren't you doing something, let's get, do, do something. Well, we are trying to be very deliberative in this process. So there are other folks who may have been working on something for a long time. We have no idea how long they've been working on it, but we wanted to be very deliberative, not uh, have a knee-jerk reaction You know, when, when things come out. And so this is our attempt. Our, uh, our hearing that we're going to be holding, we've actually been putting that together now for four to six weeks. Um, you know, and, and these bills have been worked on for many, many weeks. So we're, we, are, uh, we are working very diligently uh, what others do. We certainly don't want to cast any dispersions on, on their efforts. So we need to have either the leader or the speaker answer that question. Would the leader be willing? <laughs> we look that way first, Dave. Yeah. Uh, can you ask that again, Angela, please? Do you think the process worked? Yes, of course. So obviously, everybody, perhaps the other people right now, the fact that you have one member of the Republican caucus, which is the against the Two separate questions. Um, I think the overall goal of these particular bills are to try to get everybody on the same page with a un uniform policy both inside and outside the Capitol, and it should not be Republican versus Democrat, and it should be in conjunction with the advocacy groups, particularly the advocacy groups in in support of the victims to make sure we get this right, as opposed to, you know, just a knee-jerk reaction. You know, a similar process was put into place as a result of the Jerry Sandusky case. And through that process, some very meaningful legislation that was broadly supported came out of it to actually make an impact on people's lives. 
I think a lot of folks have put some very good ideas on the table, Republicans and Democrats and folks outside this building. I think to the extent that we're able to bring all those different thought processes together, merge them together and come out with a singular policy will benefit everybody, again, outside and inside this particular building. In regard to the process that we just went through, I, I freely admit it's a process that I hope nobody else has to go through. It's not one that I expected to have to go through as majority leader, but unfortunately we did have to go through that process. I do believe the process worked very effectively from the beginning of when we received the complaint to the investigation to turning over uh, the investigation and the materials to the district attorney's office to the conclusion of the leadership team to ask for the resignation. The one thing that did, you know, kind of sit uh, with me throughout that process and actually after, you know, kind of evaluating that process afterwards, after we had turned the information over to the proper law enforcement authorities is a lot of discretion in that process is dependent upon the action of individuals who sit in offices like myself. And I think safeguards in place to ensure that there is a check and balance on those individuals to make sure that the people in those offices are just as committed as we were to ensuring a proper investigation took place and the proper authorities were notified is essential to ensure, you know, such a scenario is handled properly in the future as well. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.